Okay, Sarah Paulson, there is no other way to begin this chat than to congratulate you on the truly historic year you've had for the People versus O.J. Simpson. You're the only person in TV history to win the Emmy, the Golden Globe, the SAG Award, the Critics' Choice Award, and the TCA Award in the same year. It literally makes my palms sweat, even though it actually happened to me. It sounds like it's happening to someone else, my palms are sweating. It really makes me sweaty. Um, my first question is, did you have to buy a new house to accommodate <laughs> all of the trophies? Uh, I had recently gotten my first house. I've never, I'm a New Yorker in my soul, even though I wasn't born there, but the idea of having a house was always just anathema to how I thought I was going to live my life. I just thought I wanted a nice apartment somewhere with a doorman. If I was lucky, a nice doorman would be good. Um, so I have a house I have not moved into yet. So right now they are currently bunched uh, on a shelf, but they are the first thing I see when I wake up. And it is designed that way currently just to continue to run. Because it, it really was, even as I, as I said when you said it, it, it's a very foreign concept that it actually ha happened, that actually happened. So I like to kind of give myself a tiny opportunity in the morning to go, oh yeah, that did happen. Look, there they are. Sometimes I pass by them and then you know, talk to them for a, <laughs> for a second. And it's like inspiration to keep going, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it, and it did, as you know, because you and I have had these conversations a lot. You know, it was, it was a long time in coming in the sense that I, I was recognized by the Academy and, uh, many times by being nominated. And I just, you know, which, which I know it sounds incredibly trite. But it is, it is an enormous honor, and it did feel like that to me. But of course, it just makes you extra hungry because your stomach is so full with the gratitude of, of being recognized at all. And then you're like, but it would be so nice to have that moment. And so when it happened, it does, it does, it, and it did happen to me when I was 42 years old. And so I thought, well, or I do think maybe, maybe that'll, that it's a good thing that it took that long. Mm. And I'm sure there are plenty of people for whom it hasn't happened yet who are in their 50s. And it's just a great, and 60s and 70s, and it's just a kind of nice thing to sort of say, it doesn't have to happen to you right out of the gate, and it can still, it can still happen. Right, and I, it's getting harder and harder to win, specifically because there are more shows than ever before. There are more yeah. products out there. So yeah. it's kind of more of an honor now than it even was a decade ago. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, specifically at the Emmys, before we talk about Roanoke, I want to know what was going through your mind when they were reading the nominees and Marsha Clark sitting next to you. Um, what was going through that, that brain of yours? Well, I remember like looking and it was Brian Cranston and Claire Danes. And I remember thinking, God, those are two actors I admire so much and who do such incredible work. And I was sort of thinking about that. And, and what had happened right before is Sterling had won. Mm. And then the thing that made me think, get hopeful, but I have been hopeful before and had it not happened. So I, try, I was just trying to keep everything in perspective, because again, I know it sounds uh, like it can't be true, but the reward was the fact that I got to play that part. It truly was. It was. It probably will be the greatest part I will have for some time because they don't. Those kind of things don't just fall off trees. That kind of um, breadth of character and full story. It just. It they're rare rare birds, and so I just thought that in and of itself is is a reward and an actual gift and something that no matter what happens tonight nobody can take away that experience that i got to play it i actually got to do it and it lives inside of me and always will and and will always be what it is to me in my heart but then dv won for the script for the marsha 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 episode he won for writing for that episode and i thought oh maybe if as as an institution, if the Academy is aware of that episode, even in the in the writer's branch as well, that that was the one that, because I think there were three scripts from our series that were nominated, if I'm, if I'm correct, and so it could have gone either way. They could have split up the thing, but that that was the one that was recognized. That happened right before my category, and I thought, well, that has to be somewhat of a good sign, right? And I remember Marsha looking at me going, that's really good, and I thought, yeah, Woo! And it just and Sterling had won, and I just thought, oh my God, if this, oh I don't know, it just it made me more nervous, and also had gave me a tiny bead of thinking, maybe it was going to happen. 
it was a real blur. I don't, it was, it, you know, people say this all the time. I do not remember the moment when they said my name and the moments of walking up the steps. I remember Brian Cranston coming to me to help me up the stairs because I remember looking at him <laughs> with like eyes this big. Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to get up the stairs while I was holding my dress and the thing. So he came down to, to such a gentleman and, and helped me walk up there and, I don't really remember anything after that. And the, this, the weird thing about it is on television, you can't tell this spatially. This, from where I was sitting quite close to the stage, but the distance from your seat when they've called your name to getting up there feels like you were, I don't know, walking from New York to Los Angeles. It was just, I just thought I was never going to get there. And then once you're on the stage, I was trying to see Marsha, but there was a camera in her face, I guess, to get her response to the whole thing. So I couldn't really see her. I saw Ryan Murphy a little bit on the aisle up because he was wearing a particular jacket that I could see. But I couldn't, the cameras were in everybody's faces, so I couldn't really see anybody. And they seemed football fields away. It was, it was scary and exciting, and I don't remember any of it. I really don't, except for those things I just said. <laughs> I was sitting backstage with with Chris Beecham from Gold Derby, and when the script won, when Marsha 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 won, I said, "I think Sarah Paulson's going to win." So we had the exact same thought. Yeah. It just I got just got this Yeah, I did. I did think I did think that was a pretty good sign. But again, you know, these kinds of things are such dice rolls. You never know, and deciding whose work is, you know, the idea of being better and all that stuff. It does. It puts a whole creepy thing on it in any way. I mean, the honor of being in the room and being nominated, and like you said before, the market is so saturated with incredible work and so much vo volume of content that to be recognized at all, I think, uh, is a big, 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 big deal. But it was really, really nice to win. It really was. So you're, you're going to be on your way to the EGOT now. So what's next, the Grammy, the Oscar, or the Tony? Oh, my God, Marcus. I don't know. Well, you're, you're filming a movie now, but we can't talk about it. It's a big. It's a big secret movie, but a, well, I mean, people know I'm doing it, yeah. But yeah, I can't. I don't think I can really talk about it. I'm constantly, you know, doing these things where I'm not allowed to talk about any of it. Mm -hmm. It's not really fun when I'm sitting here with you. I understand. Well, we can talk about Roanoke, which aired yes. last year, and I have gone on record. Roanoke and Asylum are my two favorite seasons. I, I love that you love Roanoke. It was so different and creative and there was a big twist halfway through that I didn't see coming where oh, good. it went from the, the kind of the unsolved mysteries reenactments to the like the Blair Witch Project type of documentary feel and I such, such a great twist. Ooh. What was your reaction when you finally found out what the season was about because it was bathed in secrecy? It was bathed in secrecy and I knew there was going to be a big switch uh, around episode six but I didn't know what it was going to be. I didn't know who I was going to play. I certainly didn't know I was going to come back and play Lana Winters again mm -hmm. um, it was you know so I think it was I think I played three characters this year on the show and I, and it was a weird it was a weird thing from an acting standpoint it really was to start the season knowing that I was I was an actress playing a part and then midway through the season I was going to be the I was going to be playing the actress who was playing the part so it's just it was a weird thing to kind of um, Sink your teeth into because, and we all talked about this on set. I remember Angela Bassett and I talking about this, where it was like, when you're playing something and you're trying to immerse yourself into a reality that you have to believe is true in order to really go there. But I knew I was playing an actress who was reenacting something that had happened to someone else. So it was like there were just three more lily pads to jump to that were trying to, where we were trying to make connective tissue for ourselves to do things, and it was sometimes really hard, really fun though, and like you said, so different and. It was also hard for, for me just to, like to do recaps and to talk about the show. I'd be like, Sarah Paulson plays this person who who plays this person who's really yeah. who's Lily Rabe's character. Yeah, he's Lily Rabe's character. Yeah, it was so weird. Did you guys get together, you and Lily, to talk about you know Shelby Winters? Or sorry, we did. Shelby Miller. Show. I like how you combine Shelby. <laughs> yeah. And I like it. They'll probably be like season ten and will come out that like they were actually the same person or something. <laughs> um, no, we didn't because you know Lily in the beginning was doing all of her stuff talking in a you know sort of black box room and talking about her experience and I was the one sort of having to um, live it in a way so I think we you know we didn't really talk about that we talked about plenty of other things but we weren't really breaking down character things this on this was, was it fun to work with Cuba Gooding Jr. again in a totally different dynamic well, that was I have to say really I mean I think in episode one we were in bed together and that was both of us were just like this is <laughs> 
OJ and Marsha Clark. Marsha and OJ getting it on was not something we ever really thought was going to happen. And people believe it, a lot of people on set were snickering and thought it was really pretty funny. And I, you know, I, I had no real contact with Cuba. Cuba was, when, when he was doing OJ, he was really in a zone of something and, and not in a particularly um, jovial place. And so when we were coming into the courtroom, which is often where we all were together. He rarely, I mean, we, I certainly didn't have any, any contact with him or any scenes with him. So it was really, really f fun. You know, the only time I got to hang out with Cuba during all the OJ stuff was all the, the press stuff and the panels that we would do. And um, so it was really, I, I really love him. And he was, he was so much fun to work with. He's an incredibly alive actor and incredibly responsive. And I had no way of knowing any of that from experience on the OJ thing. So it was really great. Making out with him was... That was strange, I have to say. It wasn't <laughs> that long after I play Marsha, so it was just right. still holding on to that a little in my soul, and I just thought, this just feels so wrong, so terribly wrong. And you also got to, to kiss Evan Peters. You were actually married to Evan as, as Audrey Tyndall. Do you know I, how there's so many fan videos on YouTube of, of your character and Evan's character from Roanoke. People just <laughs> love you two together. Yeah, that was the second time I got to make out with Evan because I was in Freak Show towards the end of the season. Remember, we were mm. the twins and Lobster Boy were ended up happily, <laughs> or one of the twins, right. Dot, got to be happily married to um, to Evan. But yeah, people really responded to having Audrey. And well, you know, they were kind of a really, the thing I loved the most about playing Audrey, and, and besides the fact that I got to you know be married to Evan Peters, which who doesn't want to do that, It I got to be the most, Self, I mean, a lot of that stuff I actually ad lived as Shelby, all those sort of horrifying, you know, I think there's one thing where I say I had so many more performances to give and so many more <laughs> when I walked by Cuba's dead body and what a great scene partner he was. I just was just <laughs> rattling that shit off. That was not in the script. I just sort of. Oh, that's awesome. And they were just like, just do as much of that, you know, just do as much of that as you want. And the other incredibly exciting thing about doing Roanoke is that we all were filming with all that iPhone stuff was done by all of us. Oh, wow. A hundred percent. Adina, me, Angela, every, we were running through the woods. It was us with our iPhones point. We were, we, we became cameramen and it was really exciting because we, none of us had ever had that experience where we would do a take and we would have to redo it because we were blocking someone's face and we didn't realize that, you know, and then we would literally do it. We would stop. We would play back everything on the iPhone to make sure that we got everything before we'd move on. It was really, really exciting. We all really got into what we were getting on our iPhones and who was going to cover what, and it was that was really fun. So maybe you'll be on the Emmy ballot for best camera work. <laughs> yeah, damn it, I should have, I should have put myself on the ballot for camera <laughs> operating because I was doing. We were all really doing it. I love the line when Audrey's like, you know, she's looking at some dead body and she's like, "I'm not American. I'm not used to all this carnage." Yeah. What was it like playing or, or adapting that British accent? Uh, well, that was hard, and like a bunch of, you know, there's there's all sorts of different um, opinions online. Some people thought I did it really well, and some people thought I was really awful um, with that accent, which I just think is sort of fun, because if you go to any country, uh, the different sounds you will hear from people, some of whom grew, grew up in the same town, or, or um, so I, I didn't really take it that, I just was trying to do a combination of like Emma Thompson and Christiane Amanpour and just sort of something really dramatic. And, and I was trying to overdo it in the way that, you know, she was so, you know, she was such an actress, but that, that kind of actress you really don't like to come across very often, really self-involved and just dripping in, you know, pretension. So it was really fun to do. So I didn't mind that I got to overdo it a little bit. Mm. Well, when I found out Lana Winters, Lana Winters was coming back, I think it was, I think Ryan tweeted it and said something. Yeah, he did, because he always does that. He's like, you cannot, you know, he'll call you on the phone and say, do not tell anyone. And the next thing you know, it's on the cover of Entertainment Week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I wasn't supposed to tell anyone. I thought I was supposed to keep a secret. Like, My remember when Katie's was... head was in Coven, when her head in, on the cover of Entertainment Weekly, it was supposed to be a big secret. And there, there it was, and I just thought, I don't understand what's happening right now, but yeah, he did tweet it after telling me to keep it a big secret. My first thought was, he better not be bringing her back just to kill her off, because if she dies, I'm going to be really, really angry. I know. I felt the same way, too. But she's I, she, I think someone called her in the, in the finale the na National Treasure, Lana Winters. That's right. So what was it like coming back into that part with, with wrinkles and all this time? You know, it was exciting, and also there was a part of me that thought, oh, God, I wish... I, I've said this to you before, I think. I wish 
and we always talked about on the set during season two about how we could have done a whole season of Lana Winters in the 70s, her like reporter Lana Winters, <laughs> like running around with her big falls and her ponytails and her, her fur coats and things, um, the glamour of all that. But playing her older again was both really exciting and also I wanted to, you know, because I was playing Lana, but it wasn't about Lana and Lana's tragedy and where Lana had then arrived and, and landed at this point in her life, which was obviously five years after the last time we saw Lana. Um, I just, you know, I would have loved to have seen, like, Lana at home and, you know, I wanted it to be more, but I was really there to serve a story for Adina's character, but mm -hmm. I love doing it and I love that it was the Lana Winter special and I just loved. I just love it. the The makeup is was was hard to wear, and it, it took a couple couple times for us to get it really right because um, we we didn't have the same pieces before, as we did before those prosthetics, and even just thinking about it, my face gets felt really itchy. It's fun, but it's it's a really long process. And but I love you know I, I would play Lana Winters every day if I could. And we would watch older, it. younger. Yeah, I love it. I loved it. Um, more and more actors these days are stepping behind the camera to direct. Angela Bassett directed last year. Yeah, Is this something yeah. you would ever be interested in doing? Oh, yes. I want to very much, and I've expressed this to Ryan, and I think that that is going to happen, and I don't know uh, in what way, whether it will be on Horror Story or Crime Story or Feud or something. But I think he's going to let me do it. He has... I think he even said publicly that, that I was going to do it, but I don't know when or how. And I don't know if it'll be this season on Horror Story. I don't know. They might be full up. Um, but I, I personally feel like I would want to do it there first because it's obviously we're in season seven of this show. I've been there from the beginning. So our crew, our camera operators, our wardrobe department, our, our you know makeup department, they've all it's like a big family. And so I would feel probably the safest taking that risk when I didn't know where to put the camera. I'd probably be like, hey, I'm <laughs> Somebody help me out, and and I would feel probably really safe there doing that. So that would be good. Speaking of feud, you had a a quick scene in feud, but yeah. it must have been fun to reunite with with Jessica Lang. If I could uh, do one thing always, it would be to act with Jessica Lang. And what was horrible about that is she was in Poland at the time, and so she wasn't able to be there. And we had done a thing where I had asked them if if she could, and her, I asked her if she could record her part of it so that at least when I was on the phone I could hear her mm. her voice and um, so they did that and it was all great and then they did a big rewrite on the scene and she had already left town and so Allison Wright actually came and sat in the bathroom of that uh, apartment where I was shooting and she read all of Joan Crawford's stuff off camera so I was actually acting with Allison Wright um, <laughs> <laughs> which was which is really great because she's so great um, yeah but we had it all perfectly planned and then they rewrote the scene and Jessica was in Poland and that was that so it was kind of like I was reunited with Jessica, but I really wasn't. So I'm ready for that, personally. The fact that you did play three characters on Roanoke, I think that that will help you with, with Emmy voters because we've noticed at Gold Derby, they love seeing multiple characters. Just look at Tatiana Maslany for Orphan Black. They love seeing the range of an actress. Um, now that you've won the she's Emmy. Really, yeah, well, she's a really She's I great. Now, she's that you've, great. now that you've won the Emmy, what? Are you still thinking about, you know, will, will it be just as exciting to be nominated if you get nominated again? God, I, yes, yes. And I, I hate to sound like a, um, a broken record, but, and I've said this to you before, I wanted to do this since I was in the womb. The idea that I get to do it, the idea that I've been honored for doing it, the idea that people even notice my work at all. I mean, I think I've said this too, I have so many incredibly talented friends who just have never had an opportunity, and it is always about that, like you either get a part that allows you to shine, there's no difference between an actor who is being recognized and an actor who is not except for opportunity, and you either get called to play on the field or you don't, and if you do, you have this incredible um, shot at doing work that means something to you and the extra gravy of, of being of being of being recognized for it, but you can't have that opportunity if you're not being given the shot to to do it. And so I've been so lucky uh, with American Horror Story and getting to play all these different characters and these different parts. And and last year on Roanoke, playing three parts in one season was so exciting. And you would think like by episode six, 
by uh, season six when you're sort of going, what could they possibly throw at me now? And what can I possibly get to do now that would be as exciting as it was in season two or three or four? And, um, and I loved that part of Sally in season five. And, and I just, I just thought, what am I going to, what could I possibly get to do? And I got to run the gamut of playing a, a sweet, um, all American girl who just loved her husband and tragedy struck them. And then I got to play this incredibly narcissistic, self-involved British actress. And then I got to reprise playing Lana Winters at 79 years old at 42. I got to try to, you know, that was the one thing that was disappointing to me. I didn't get to stand and walk around very much. And my, one of my favorite things about playing her in season two was all that walking I got to do before, um, before, before Dylan McDermott appeared and, uh, and it was so wonderful to try to inhabit that physical body of, of a much older person. And it made me really feel like I was older. And I didn't get to do that this time. And that was really disappointing just, just because it's so fun to try to connect your body in that way. So yeah, and I got to do all of that in one, in one year. And I don't know where I would ever find that in any other, on any other show. So people are always asking me like if it gets boring or if I want to do something else. And, they're gonna have to drag me out of there kicking and screaming because it's too it's too exciting. And you know, some seasons I like doing things more than others and and but the great news is if I didn't enjoy that one as much at the end of that season, I get to look forward to seeing what they're gonna throw at me next. And that's an incredibly privileged place to be in and, and I don't take any of it lightly. So if I were to be recognized again uh, by being nominated, it would just be it would be a, a, a dream come true, really. Well before we go, are you able to give us like a two word tease of your character from season seven. Oh man. Mm. Something that wouldn't get you killed on set. I can't get killed on set uh, by Ryan for this, but what I, what I, I don't know if I could say something about my character, but what I can tell you is I've never been more tired in my life mm. on any season of this show than I have been. And we are only, they're jumping around a little bit to help me be able to do the, the Spielberg things at the same time. So uh, we're a little bit out of order, but we're basically on episode two. And I, I've i never been so tired, emotionally, physically, intellectual, any of it. It's harrowing, to say the least. Right out of the gate. Well, right thank you so much for, for taking some time to talk to us. I don't want to keep Steven Spielberg waiting. <laughs> Okay, goodbye, and, and congrats again on your incredible year. Thank you so much, Marcus. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.